This lesson discusses the role of the electron and chemical reactions. In the previous lesson, we used the analogy of Legos to explain the atomic theory and how atoms form aggregates we call molecules. Even though Lego pieces is a good model for chemistry, the analogy is not perfect. One thing Legos cannot do is to lose or gain electrons. Atoms and molecules have the ability to lose or gain electrons. Whether an atom or a molecule actually does or not depends foremost on its natural tendency to form ions, but this can also be affected by reaction conditions. In the next lesson, we'll discuss which atoms are more likely to form what kind of ions. In this lesson, we'll just focus on the question of what happens if an atom or molecule gains or loses one or more electron. The first thing that is important to remember is that if an atom or molecule loses an electron, its mass essentially does not change. This is because an electron is almost 2,000 times lighter than a proton or a neutron. A typical atom has many protons and neutrons, so losing or gaining electrons does not change the mass of the atom or molecule. For example, the copper 1 plus and copper 2 plus ions would both have the same molar mass as a neutral copper atom. If a neutral atom or molecule gains electrons, it would become a negative ion, such as the nitrate ion NO3 minus. A negative ion is also called an anion. On the other hand, if a neutral atom or molecule loses electrons, it would become a positive ion, such as the calcium ion Ca2+. A positive ion is also called a cation. When balancing a chemical equation with ions or electrons, it is important to remember to also balance the charges in addition to the atoms. For example, this equation appears to be balanced if you just look at the atoms. But the charges are not balanced. To balance the charges, you actually have to change the coefficients of both Al3 plus and Al to 2. When an atom loses one or more electrons to form a positive ion, the name of the ion follows the name of the atom. For example, the Mg2 plus ion is just called the magnesium ion. The hydrogen ion H plus is sometimes just called a proton because the hydrogen atom has one proton and one electron only. Losing the electron, the H plus ion is equivalent to a bare proton. On the other hand, if an atom gains electrons to form a negative ion, the ion is named with an IDE suffix. For example, the F minus ion is called fluoride. Molecules can also gain or lose electrons. These are called polyatomic ions. There are many negatively charged polyatomic ions. Most of the common ones have oxygens in them. These are called oxyanions. Examples are sulfite, nitrate, perchlorate, etc. There are only two important polyatomic cations to remember. They are ammonium, NH4+, and mercury-1, Hg2, 2+. If you have trouble memorizing the names of the oxyanions, use these rules. 1. The most common oxyanion of any element has the A-T-E suffix. For example, ClO3- is chlorate. 2. The ion that has one fewer oxygen has the I-T-E suffix. ClO2- is chlorite. 3. Usually, there are only one or two common oxyanions for each element, but elements like chlorine, bromine, and iodine have more. The ion with one fewer oxygen than chlorite is hypochlorite, ClO-. The ion with one more oxygen than chlorate is called perchlorate. 4. All oxyanions of the same element have the same charge. For example, ClO-, ClO2-, ClO3-, and ClO4- all have the same charge. With these rules, you can just memorize the charge of the most common oxyanion of each element and the number of oxygens it has. The rest you can deduce using the rules. Other than the ones with chlorine, the others you should know are sulfate and sulfite, nitrate and nitrite, carbonate, phosphate, chromate, and permanganate. There is also dichromate, which doesn't follow the rules. 
the ions hydrogen sulfate, hydrogen carbonate, hydrogen phosphate, and dihydrogen phosphate are derived from the oxy anions by adding H+. Other than the oxy anions, some of the other common polyatomic anions are hydroxide, cyanide, and acetate. 